Hello and welcome to Money Live News and Views. I am Devashish Basu. On February 24th, stock trading at the National Stock Exchange platform started wobbling. At 10.06, the live ticks for NSE indices stopped getting updated. But NSE kept the market open. Then at 11.40, NSE shut down the derivatives market and after 3 minutes, the cash equities market. There was no prior intimation that they would take this step. Then NSE Clearing Limited, which is a wholly owned subsidiary of NSE and responsible for clearing and settlement of all trades executed on the NSE and also its risk management system, actually shut down. The market remained shut for the next four hours. There was no communication for the brokers. Brokers and investors assumed when it was almost three o'clock that the market would not reopen. At around 2.30, Zerodha, India's largest broker, messaged its customers that it, would, that it would exit the intraday equity NSE positions on BSE. Since there was no further updates from NSE, around 3.10 p.m., Zerodha and other brokers started squaring off certain types of transactions. However, suddenly at around 3.17, after all intraday equity positions had been squared off, NEC abruptly informed that there would be, after all, an extended trading session from 3.45 to 5 p.m. Now, had NSE informed brokers of a potential reopening or even an extension of trading hours, at least by 3 o'clock, we, along with many other brokers, would not have had the risk mitigation measures and, and were forced to square off the positions on NSE. This is what Zerodha has said. Unfortunately, there were no updates given to brokers and therefore we had no other choice according to Zerodha. This action of Zerodha, which was forced by lack of communication from NSE, inflicted losses on many investors. Now, this highly mismanaged episode was the 10th serious glitch suffered by NSE since July 2017, that is in just last three and a half years. This time, NSE blamed its problems on two telecom service providers. Their links were unstable, said NSE, which resulted in an impact on the online risk management system of NSE clearing. The biggest issue of this episode was the failure of SEBI mandated interoperability of these two exchanges. Now, NSE has NSE Clearing Limited, just like that, BSE has what is called Indian Clearing Corporation. More than two years ago, that is, on 27th November 2018, the Securities and Exchange Board of India announced the interoperability of between these two to help brokers consolidate their clearing and settlement functions at a single clearinghouse, irrespective of the stock exchange on which the trade is executed. If SEBI had ensured that this interoperability thing was working, then this February 24th situation could have been easily tackled. All NSE trades would have moved seamlessly to BSE, but this did not happen. Strangely, a press release from SEBI claimed that interoperability was, worked, was working fine on February 24th, since, as it said, turnover on the BSE's equity segment had jumped to 40,600 40, crore, compared to an average daily turnover of 5,200 crore. Now, there's just one problem with this. This 40,000 crore may sound like an eight times the normal trading volume, but this includes over 29,000 crore of block deal done in the Bosch script at 8.57 in the morning, that is half an hour before the market opened, in what is called a block trading window. Now, if you remove that, the figure is just 11,000 crore, which is less than double of BSE's normal trading volume. Very clearly, contrary to what SEBI is claiming, interoperability has not been working on that particular day. If it did, BSE's volumes would have been 8 to 10 times higher, not twice. Now, NSE itself admits that it closed down because NS NCL's online risk management system did not work. So, brokers and their investors couldn't trade on BSE and became prisoners to, of the NSE system. Now, BSE has formally complained to, to SEBI saying that it was anti-competitive and unethical on the part of NCL to stop its operations to preserve NSE's monopoly and hold the market to ransom. The very, very strong words. But with SEBI batting for NSE and insisting that interoperability worked, despite NCL itself admitting that it didn't, BSE's complaints may fall on deaf ears. SEBI's press release also asserts that trading outages are an area of concern all over the world. So it was perfectly natural. Nevertheless, the glitch 
its subsequent mismanagement and poor communication to traders causing losses raises too many questions. One, NSE should have restarted from the disaster recovery site. It is mandatory that after 45 minutes of trading that they should be switching to a disaster recovery site, but it didn't and it hasn't explained why it didn't and SEBI seems to be fine with it. Two, why did NSE announce the reopening of the market as late as 3.18 p.m. when brokers had already squared off almost all intraday positions on the BSE? Three, NSE itself admitted that NCL wasn't working properly and brokers couldn't upload collaterals on the NCL side. So how did SEBI claim interoperability worked? Shouldn't SEBI's technical advisory committee have gone into all of these issues before the regulator gave NSE and NCL a clean chit? In 1992, when NSE was conceived, the idea was to offer a strong competition to BSE, which was then controlled by unruly brokers, and they wouldn't want to come under SEBI regulations. But the situation has long reversed. Over the last two decades, NSE has come to dominate the system so much that it has repeatedly got away very lightly for a series of wrongdoings, such as allowing tax evasion through client code modifications, that was in 2011, handling of the fat finger crash, 2012, irregular appointments to the top, 2012 and 13, trying to crush competition between 2008 and 2013, bypassing SEBI rules or pulling off lucrative acquisitions in unrelated businesses, and then of course the monumental algo scam of 2010 and 14. All this was odious but some was somewhat understandable when the NSC management was backed by powerful political connections. Now the NSC has a new team at the top after the algo scam. It is mystifying the how NSC, a near monopoly, gets protection as the February 24th episode shows when it is competition and accountability that should be a regulatory objective. Thanks for watching.